happy Monday everybody I hope you're having a good day today so far I hope you had a good weekend um, I've had a pretty good weekend um, if you follow me on social media then you'll know that I had decided to quit smoking and Thursday around 10 o'clock that night was the last time I smoked so um, tomorrow I'll be starting on my uh, fourth, fifth day so Monday will be four days, Tuesday going on my fifth day. So I'm coming up on that week mark. So for anybody who saw that and was, you know, maybe praying about it, that I could get through it, whatever it may have been, if you'd known, I do appreciate it. And um, I'm really excited and looking forward to the, to, to not doing that anymore, to not spending money on it, saving a lot of money. It's really great. Um, you know, the things that I've thought about that I could, you know, do instead of buy cigarettes. Anyway, so I, I appreciate the support. Okay, a few things. Um, I found a few things to talk about. Um, the first thing that really blew my mind was I saw this article about um, an employee getting arrested at Sonic because cocaine ended up on a customer's hot dog. And I was just curious how that happened. So this is from the Daily Wire by Lee Blamayu. Um, a Sonic employee in New Mexico was arrested after cocaine was found on top of a customer's hot dog. According to police, Celine Gonzalez found a bag of cocaine on a hot dog she had purchased at a Sonic restaurant in Espanola, New Mexico. Police verified that the substance in the bag was cocaine, which they said was found after the woman began to eat. While investigating the cocaine, police arrested 54-year-old employee David Salazar on a felony cocaine possession charge. Footage viewed by police showed Salazar, quote, frantically searching for something he lost, end quote, after making Gonzalez's order. Um, they said that he told them he had bought the cocaine in the restaurant's parking lot. Sonic is not the only fast food restaurant to be making the wrong kind of headlines recently. Joining Arby's after a dead body was found in a walk-in freezer in Louisiana. The body belonged to 63-year-old, uh, is that Niget Ni Lee? I'm not sure you say that. A manager of an Arby's restaurant in New Iberia, Louisiana. And the death is believed to have been an accident. Quote, a situation like this is unusual, so we're taking extra precautions during the investigation. We pretty much have completed our process of the crime scene. After completely processing the crime scene, this does not seem to be seem like a homicide. It seems like an accident. Uh, Laster acknowledged that the death did seem suspicious, but said police had not yet uncovered any evidence of foul play. He added that nothing is set in stone and said that they were still waiting for medical examiners to determine the cause of death. We're going to re-examine all the evidence tomorrow and they're going to conduct an autopsy to give us the cause and manner of death. So there are a few more steps that we need to take before a final determination is made. Man, so cocaine at uh, Sonic, dead body at Arby's. I, I do not like Arby's. I think they are so gross. I know so there's some people I know that would eat at Arby's even still to this day. And it just a thought of it grosses me out. Here from Blaze Media from Pasaka of Chicago shootings. 50 people shot, 10 fatally this weekend. New video shows criminals armed with makeshift machine guns open fire on crowd, killing 14-year-old. Did you hear about this one? I mean, did, did you hear about this? happening? I bet you didn't. Chicago suffered yet another bloody weekend as scores of shootings erupted throughout the city. Shooting fatalities reached double digits for the second weekend in a row. WLS-TV reported on Sunday night, quote, at least 50 people have been shot, 10 fatally, in Chicago shootings so far this weekend. There were 51 people shot, including 12 fatally, during Memorial Day weekend in Chicago. Including in this weekend's rampant gun violence was a tragic mass shooting in the Austin neighborhood on Chicago's bus side. A large group gathered to commemorate a man who perished in a fatal car crash four years earlier, according to police. A verbal altercation erupted during the tribute for the deceased man, which then quickly escalated into a deadly gunfight, said Deputy Chief Adnardo Gutierrez of the Chicago Police Department. Quote, 
and they were out there celebrating and then something happened and a verbal altercation occurred and somebody began shooting or multiple people began shooting, Gutierrez said during a press conference on Sunday. I want to go ahead and apologize for my voice. I am losing it. Surveillance video shows that moment that gunfire erupts. People at the Celebration of Life event run for their lives. The footage shows a gunman behind a car shooting his firearm. A 25-year-old woman was fatally shot and six other people were wounded. The woman was pronounced dead at Mount Sinai Hospital. The six other victims were hospitalized, including a 29-year-old man in critical condition with a chest wound. Police are still investigating the mass shooting and no suspects have been arrested as of Sunday afternoon. <clears throat> the heartbreaking gun violence was not only reserved for the weekend. CWB Chicago released a chilling video of a group of criminals armed with makeshift machine guns opening fire on a crowd. The alarming video reportedly shows a fatal shooting that happened around 8.20 p.m. on Wednesday. The shocking video released on Sunday shows four armed suspects scurrying through a vacant lot and hiding behind the bushes and a building and unleash a hellstorm of gunfire into a crowd not seen on the video. Two of the shooters were using machine gun-like firearms. The Chicago reported, the CW Chicago reported, quote, the offenders whose guns generated automatic fire were like using handguns equipped with Glock switches, illegal aftermarket devices that enable semi-automatic pistols to fire more than one round with a single trigger pull. The devices are prohibited under state and federal laws, end quote. The shooting killed 14-year-old Pierre Johnson after he was shot in the chest. Two men, ages 18 and 19, were critically wounded. A 21-year-old man was shot in the hand. Officers, officers with Chicago Police Department responded to the shooting. When they arrived at the crime scene, a 16-year-old boy shot at them and they returned fire. The boy was found with a gunshot wound to his leg, but investigators said it was not clear if he was shot by police or the earlier shooting. The boy was arrested and charged with six counts of attempted first-degree murder of peace officers, three counts of aggravated discharge of a firearm toward a vehicle occupied by peace officers, three counts of aggravated discharge of a firearm toward an unoccupied vehicle, and unlawful use of a weapon by a person under 21, according to police. They're young. Sometimes they make silly decisions. That's the, the tagline you're going to go with. That's not a silly decision. Not even for a young person. Where are these kids' parents? That's the problem. Where's their fathers? That's the problem. Silly decisions. My goodness. Okay. If you enjoy going to Six Flags, you may end up wanting to boycott them. Because they are hosting drag queen shows for all ages at their amusement parks across the country, and one of them is showcasing History of Pride presentation. Six Flags, the National Amusement Park Company, is presenting drag queen shows at several of its theme parks in honor of Pride Month. One Six Flags amusement park is also showcasing a presentation about the history of Pride Month. The Six Flags Over Texas location is offering a schedule of live entertainment and fun activities to celebrate Pride Month, including eight drag shows for all ages. From the Amusement Parks website, quote, The 45-minute live show will make you laugh and clap as our Pride Entertainers offer a first-of-its-kind show at Six Flags Over Texas. Local drag queen legend Salem Moon will MC our drag show. The site adds, All content is rated PG and is considered to be family-friendly and exclusive, inclusive for all ages. Anyone under 17 should consult with parent or guardian if there is concern. End quote. The amusement park will also offer a presentation about the history of Pride Month. And it says if you're interested in learning more about how the National Pride Celebration began, then visit Crazy Horse Saloon to see digital presentation on the TV screens, the site states. There are also Pride events being held in June at the Six Flags Discovery Kingdom in Bahia, California. The park's website states, quote, Celebrate Pride Month at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. Don't miss a celebration that features delicious specialty food and beverage offerings, collection of Pride merchandise, and an all-new entertainment, not to mention foam cannons, end quote. 
The amusement park says, quote, join us for our show unlike any other. Drag queens across the Bay Area, such as Drag Queen Margo, will be hosting shows throughout the night. The Saint, uh, Six Flags St. Louis location will have, quote, unquote, live entertainment by a troupe of drag queens known as the Divas of the Grove. Drag Queen shows will also be held at Six Flags Great America in Illinois and Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey. The Six Flags New England part of Massachusetts will be transformed into the Pride Mosphere, the Gateway Pundit reported. Quote, being called the Pride Mosphere, the park will be completely transforming from its usual look. And this is according to Explore Western Massachusetts. Instead, park, go park goers will be immersed in rainbow decor, balloons, rainbow street performers, interactive rainbow photo opportunities, and more. Drummers, stilt walkers, and balloon artists in rainbow attire will be present throughout the month of June, filling the park with their best pride fashion. Musical performance that includes drag shows will also be taking place according to Six Flags, end quote. There are also pride events scheduled at Six Flags locations in Georgia, Maryland, and San Antonio, Texas. Notably, the Six Flags locations in Mexico and Canada do not have pride events planned according to the website for the parks. According to Six Flags, it is, quote, the world's largest regional theme park company with $1.4 billion of revenue in 2019 and 27 parks across North America. Michelle Blood at Blaze, Texas at Lost Transgender Surgeries, Puberty Blockers, Cross-Sex Hormones for Children. Texas Governor Greg Abbott signed a bill Friday banning transgender surgeries and related medical interventions for children. This bill, SB 14, prohibits providing certain children with procedures meant for gender transitioning and gender reassignment. It also prohibits using public money or public assistance for those procedures. Prohibited procedures under Texas law are those, quote, for the purpose of transitioning a child's biological sex as determined by the sex organs, chromosomes, and endogenous profiles of the child or affirming the child's perception of the child's sex if that perception is inconsistent with the child's biological sex, end quote. Banned drugs for transitioning include puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones. Banned surgeries include castration, vasectomy, hysterectomy, orphorectomy, metoidoplasty, nectomy, mastectomy, phalloplasty, vaginoplasty, and surgeries that sterilize a child. I don't know if I pronounced all those right. Exceptions to the law include children who began receiving non-surgical interventions before June 1st and children who have attended at least 12 counseling sessions six months ahead of receiving prescriptions. The children to whom the exception applies, quote, shall wean off the prescription drug over a period of time and in a manner that is safe and medically appropriate and that minimizes the risk of complications, end quote. The bill becomes effective September 1st, Healthcare providers violating at risk losing their licenses. On signing the bill into law, Texas became the largest state in the country to enact legislation protecting children from the risky, controversial, life-altering procedures. The American Civil Liberties Union pledged to file a lawsuit when the bill passed the Texas legislature in May, calling the life-altering procedures, quote-unquote, medically necessary for assuring transgender kids can, quote, succeed in school and live authentically as themselves, end quote. Uh, the ACLU said, quote, we will be filing a lawsuit to protect transgender youth in Texas from being stripped of access to health care that keeps them healthy and alive. Medically necessary health care is a critical part of helping transgender adolescents succeed in school, establish healthy relationships with their friends and family, and live authent authent authentically as themselves. We will defend the rights of transgender youth in court, just as we have done in other states engaging in this anti-science and anti-discriminatory fear-mongering. The fact that they can even sit there, probably with a straight face, and say that banning this is anti-science, when the irony all along is that they're the anti-science people. Um, <clears throat> and I do like that, you know, they're not kids that have already been on it. They're not just going to rip it off of... Because when you've been taking a medication for a really long time, you build up a, uh, especially drugs like that, a tolerance to them. And, a, a, like, your body starts to expect it. So you can get addicted, and then you're going to start getting withdrawals for not taking it. So weaning them off is a good idea. This is why I have a problem with um, 
overdiagnosing, especially boys with ADHD as children, because you put them on this medication and they really don't need it. But now at the age of eight, seven, you know, seven, eight, nine, you're getting them addicted to a medication that they will take for the rest of their lives if they don't understand that they really don't need to do that. And you would cause your child to be a drug addict at nine years old. I have a problem with that. I have a huge problem with that. The Tableau pastor begs for penance over the way a cartoon white girl was positioned on a calendar. Um, I just had to look at this because I, I always love the articles from Brought Again on Louder with Crowder. So, John C. Dorhauer is the pastor of the United Church of Christ in Ohio and has sinned. He has sinned against anti-racism with the release of a church calendar that didn't reach the commitment to anti-racism he and his church strives for. Dorhauer issued a sniveling apology on the church's website over the cover. Quote, it has been brought to my attention that a slight rotation of the cover image in either direction would more accurately reflect the racial equity we seek. I am grateful for such attention to the sub subtleties of racism and agree. Now, I'm sure I have you wondering what could have possibly caused such an apology. The heading gives you a breadcrumb. It involves a white girl. Was a white girl calling the cops on two black kids playing basketball? Was she selling white girl tears? Was she actually appropriating with braids in her hair while she did the Dougie? Nope. <clears throat> you should love your neighbors as yourself. Okay, here's the white girl. Okay, she's at the top. Apparently that's the problem. Because in a cartoon description of a multicultural group of children equally spaced, laughing and holding hands with each other, the little cartoon white girl was on top. For this, he has sinned against the Lord, the Lord of wokeness. He needs to say 10 Ibram X Kendis and do five Robin DeAngelos. Due to a cartoon of happy children on a calendar, Dorhauer was reminded, quote, of the kind of diligence required to fully overcome the ravages of white privilege still embedded in our system, our psyche, and our culture, end quote. He promises a new process to approve graphics will be put in place that aligns with the church's vision of, quote, unquote, anti-racism. While many in the woke cult are new to the game, credit Reverend Dorhauer for being true to the game. He goes back to 2015 Huffington Post blog post lecturing white men over all their whiteness. There's a full five years before it became a plank in the Democrat Party's platform. More recently, he attacked Florida Governor Ron DeSantis over allowing opposing viewpoints on a single college campus in Florida. Quote, I want to express my moral outrage at Governor DeSantis, willing to compromise and sacrifice the future, the vision, the hopes, the dreams, and the safety of the students on this campus for his aspirations to serve as president, end quote. Dorhauer called for a prayer to God until, quote, justice prevails and the evil of racism ends, end quotes. The racism of a cartoon depiction of eight children living together in harmony. That goes against all anti-racist teachings. So, there you go. Uh, this is uh, racist. And how dare this picture have a white girl on top. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Uh, thank you for joining me. I hope you learned something new. Uh, there just wasn't really a whole lot to talk about. And in my opinion, I am working on something for another episode. But I'm, I'm not going to let you know what it is. But I am working on something. So stay tuned for that. And just so you can know when it comes out. You should subscribe to my Rumble. And my YouTube. And like and share the videos. Follow me on social media. My link tree is always added and posted there as well. In the description. And the links to the articles. If you ever want to read those are also linked. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Again thank you for the support and my decision to quit smoking and praying for me if you are I, I do appreciate it i hope you have a good rest of your day and god bless